here for our meditation service. I'm Reverend Keith. This is Soul Center. This is our meditation service. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and practice the art of communion with spirit. So for those of you who are here in person in this room, I'm going to go ahead and invite you to make sure that all cellular devices are in either meditation mode, also known as airplane mode, or just simply off. And uh, good morning and good afternoon and good evening to all of our love streamers who are streaming in right now. And if you are tuning in right now, this is our Soul Center Meditation Service. You might want to dim the lights, draw the blinds, uh, close the door, whatever it is, or put your device on Do Not Disturb. And uh, we're getting ready to move into what the mystics throughout all of the millennia have been doing from the dawn of time, and that is to be still and know that I am. And the I am is the presence of the divine, and the I am is the presence of your own beingness. And no matter what form or tradition or practice of meditation, even if it's unconscious meditation, when we sometimes when we're exercising or you just get lost in a daydream or a pray dream. Um, that's still communion with spirit, maybe not as an awareness, but as an energy. And so all of the practices from around the globe, no matter what the religion, no matter what the teaching, all meditation does promote communion with spirit. The energy of the eternal back of all life, the very source, the beginning. It is actually the power of creation. And yet, when we are with it, it is still. But it is brilliant. And if you allow it to, it will dissolve all illusions of separation and it will open you to your magnificence. Make no mistake about it. All practices, as you've heard me say before, whether it's a meditation of mantra or activation to a particular frequency of the eternal, the eternal frequencies, love, peace, joy, harmony, goodness, those never go anywhere. The temporal frequencies are what we let go of. And if we really, really want to take advantage of this as a spiritual opportunist, You'll allow the energy of transmutation to bring us back to our spiritual DNA, to our true nature. So that's what we're doing. And whether it's a meditation of mantra, whether it's a meditation of activation, whether it's a meditation of stillness, which is what we'll be doing, or a meditation of movement, all of that has an intention built into it. And then there's the intention we bring. So any intentions you may have, I'm going to offer a couple suggestions. Some of those suggestions are, you'll allow this to be the most relaxing, most deep, most profound, most delicious meditation ever. And you'll allow that you will not be distracted by anything, nothing from the inner world, nothing from the outer world. If there are some outer noises, you'll just let them fade into the background. If there are any inner thoughts, you'll allow them to transmute <coughs> into stillness. 
And, uh, and then the other intention I'm going to invite you to possibly entertain is that uh, you will allow your intentions to align with the desires of your soul and just completely relax. If you hear every word I say as we center, wonderful. If you don't hear a word I say, no problem. If you fall asleep, no problem. Uh, if you have some wandering thoughts, just allow them to move on by and, uh, and the rest will be self-explanatory. Um, I think that's it. Oh, one more intention. All the channels, all the meridians of our physical, emotional, and mental bodies to be wide open to the eternal. That's what we're going to allow ourselves to experience. I'll center us. We'll move into the stillness. We'll come out in a wave of prayer. And then we will move on to our service. So welcome. Allow yourselves to get comfortable. The lights are going to go down as we go up. We are now ready to begin. As always, we begin first by giving ourselves permission to relax. Just saying to ourselves in our minds, I give myself permission to relax. As we invite, as we evoke, and as we allow the divine energies of peace, and love, beauty, and goodness, serenity, and calm to wash over us and to rise up from within us, knowing we have no place to go. And there is nothing to do except completely surrender into the deepest states of relaxation, rejuvenation, and revelation. And so we bring our awareness to our breath, our breathing, and solely with intention. We intend to allow our breath to become fuller, deeper, richer, and wider. I just invite you to observe that soft, cool, tingling sensation as you inhale, whether you feel it around the inner nostrils or over your tongue. And as we allow the breath and breathing to become deeper for the moment, We'll utilize the exhalation as the vehicle of release, transmutation. On the next exhalation, I invite you to imagine you're letting go of any tension, any stress, any concerns, dormant, or otherwise, from any time earlier in the month, year, or lifetime. Just feel and see from all muscles, bones, tissues, emotions, and thoughts, that energy is releasing as we exhale, as we inhale the eternal frequency of peace and allow it to proliferate every area of our body, emotions, and mind.
exhaling, we let go of figuring and analyzing. As we inhale the energy of inspiration and clarity. Exhaling, we let go of efforting and trying. As we inhale the energy of ease effortlessness. Exhaling, we let go of the small self as we inhale and become aware of our eternal being. And we let go of time. We let go of the past. We let go of the future. We let go of the present as we open fully and completely to the eternal. You'll begin to notice a soft and gentle transition as the exhalation joins the inhalation and you can feel it as it fans the internal eternal flame. Many have felt it in the heart center as it begins to grow and glow in luminosity and spaciousness. Each cycle of breathing taking us deeper, rising us higher, as you can feel all contagion waves of light flooding your physical body with wellness, peace, and vitality. You can feel that proliferation of radiance. As you inhale, it comes all the way down to your toes. And as you exhale, you can feel it spreading. Relaxation. And vitality into your ankles. You can feel it rising as though every cell in your body is illuminating from the inside out, rising into your calves and shins. Everything is softening, strengthening, revitalizing. You can feel it in your kneecaps, in the tendons, joints, and ligaments. Presence and the power of the divine flowing through your hamstrings and calves. As the legs and toes and feet fully immerse in the lightness of being. And that energy begins to swirl around the root at the base of the spine, the hip softening, strengthening, purifying as a swirling light ascends through your root, divine strength, stability, oneness, rising into your lower belly and lower back as your sacrum opens to the radiance of balance and harmony. You can feel your spiritual DNA unmarred, unencumbered, as everything returns, calm. You can feel the energy rising into your 
midsection, your belly, your adrenals, middle back, core, ease and effortlessness. And you can feel the energy of joy flooding your heart and chest, beauty in your shoulder blades. You can feel freedom in your shoulders as all density evaporates. We return to the beginning. And as that energy makes its way into your collarbone and throat, and the back of the neck, you can feel elegance, self-love. And that energy making its way into your cheeks, scalp, swirling around the ears and tingling on the eyelids. As the inner eye merges with the outer eyes, the inner ear aligns with the outer ears. And you can feel the energy on your crown wide open. As divine illumination and the energy flows from our physical body into our emotional body. Divine strength, compassion, unwavering love. And that energy flows into the mental body. And you can feel providence divine directioning as the surface mind becomes one with the higher mind. The wisdom of the soul. You can feel the energy moving from the mental body to the bliss body where we commune with our beingness, our soul the divine as us. Feel the presence as you. Genderless, raceless, nationalityless, just the pure essence of your being. No titles, no labels. We feel the omnipresence of the divine, of our soul. Pure oneness, pure goodness. The power of creation. And it is here that we allow ourselves to go deeper and higher, to rest, rejuvenate and relax in the stillness.
deeper, rising even higher. you to bring your awareness back to your breath, continuing to allow it to become fuller, richer, deeper, fresher, even as we come back into a loose state of divine awareness, we, we allow the energy of our essence, the radiance of the soul, to know itself, shine itself, be itself. We allow its magnificence, its strength, its clarity to have its way. We open to the infinite benevolent potentials and possibilities, divine directioning. As we acclimate to even greater good. I invite you to imagine. Imagine yourself standing barefoot in the most beautiful place on earth, whether it's in a garden or in a forest, at the beach, or in the desert, wherever you feel a kinship and oneness with Mother Earth. We take a moment as we open to the Holy Presence even more and I invite you to become aware of your entire energy body, your physical, emotional, mental bodies, the energy center. And as you feel and see and sense yourself standing, 
in that beautiful oasis. Notice at the bottom, the south pole of your energy field, your 10th chakra, your earth star, where each of us grounds heaven on earth. That part of our spiritual DNA that allows us to anchor being in the world but not of the world. Oneness in the material world. I invite you to bring your awareness to the top of your energy field, to your soul star at the north pole of your energy field. Passion, creation, purpose, being infinite benevolent possibilities. The energy of the soul. And on your next inhalation, imagine the energy as you inhale, coming down from the source through your soul star, through your crown, through your heart, down your central core to your earth star. Aligning, grounding, heaven on earth, As you exhale, you can feel it rise up, bearing the fruits and the blossoms of the grandest and greatest expression of wellness, prosperity, nurturance, kindness, and generosity. This is the nature of life. Inhaling, drawing that energy down to the bottom of your energy field. Exhaling, feeling the blooms and blossoms of goodness as we recalibrate, as we acclimate to the real reality. We take a moment in deep gratitude knowing that there is one omni-amorous power, intelligence, presence, back of all life that we call the universe. Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh, Elohim, Adonai, Dio. God, we open to its magnificence and our magnificence as microcosmic expressions born in the image and likeness. And I'm grateful to know by relaxing as we steep and step into our true beingness, we allow these eternal frequencies of infinite benevolent potentials and possibilities and there are holy expressions to have their way to, through, and as our beingness, the highest, greatest, grandest vision and version of our lives, in our physical, emotional, mental body, and in our body of affairs, our relationships aligned with kindness, reverence, love, and respect, generosity, and goodness. Mm, how good it is to know that we are one with this. We can never be separate. One with the love, the presence, the grace, the grandeur. And as we ground it, as we embrace it, as we feel it in our arms and legs and organs and tissues as wellness, as prosperity, as goodness, as peace, we simply come back into a lucid state of holy awareness and we allow it to continue to expand. We do so in agreement simply by saying, and so it is. Amen. And whenever you feel ready, if you haven't already, you can open your eyes and just let it mingle and tingle into your bones and tissues, the integration. And uh, in a moment, the lights are going to come up. I want to welcome you back. Uh, love and live streamers, welcome back. We have finished our meditation service. We're getting ready to do our music and our message, which I promise you will be magnificent. We're going to take a few minute break if you need to use the restroom down the hall for those of you here you know where it is at home and we will be back in about three minutes
Good morning, Soul Center. Good morning. Lovely to see you all on this day. This turned out to be bright and sunshiny, which is fabulous. My name's Paulette Smith, and I'm a member of the Board of Directors here at Soul Center. It's my distinct pleasure and honor to welcome you here to our Sunday service. So let us start with our Soul Center declaration. If we could all please rise. It's coming up on your screen. Yes, <laughs> and it's in your program. Let's think about these words when we say them, okay? We'll all say it together. There is one life, and that life is God. That life is perfect, and that life is my life now. I am here to receive the divine message for me. I am awake, I am tapped in, and I am transformed. Thank you. You may be seated. Today we have our house band, Jesse Godoy and Brian Sherrick. And we have the amazing Arne Batson in the house today. And now we have Vaughn. And by the way, it's Vaughn's birthday, so let's say happy birthday. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, please remember to turn off the cell phones. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Reverend Susie Lula from Agape International Spiritual Center minister and author will lead a five-week master class called Inspired Parenting, Tools for Thriving Family. 
It's an experiential journey of the heart into the dynamic, transformative, and expansive world of parenting and caregiving, and what it means from a space of wholeness, joy, curiosity, and harmony. Sign up to receive emotional, mental, spiritual, and physical resources to transform your parenting experience. This masterclass emphasizes the real need of your own personal healing and growth as a parent as you simultaneously tend to the personal healing and growth of your child. The group starts Wednesday, April 24, from 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific. Register at, now I'm not sure if this is correct, um, agape or it's soulcenteroc.com. Thank you. This was printed. Uh, with the other. Um, also, uh, Reverend uh, Lula's uh, book is now available in the Soul Center bookstore. The book is called The Conscious Parent, Transforming Ourselves, Empowering Our Children. The inspired parenting classes are based on it. Diana Divine Lights free in-person polar party was rescheduled to April 26 because of rain. Join Diana for prayer blessings by Soul Center licensed practitioner Param, refreshments by Lynn, and of course, amazing music. This event is approved by, but not presented by Soul Center. Please re-reserve your spot on the new sign-up sheet at the welcome table uh, confirmation of the new date reserves your spot and enough catered food. Please include your full name, email, and cell phone number. Next, we have some great news for some of you that might have missed out. Due to the cold and rain this weekend, uh, Reverend Keith's spring meditation and nature retreat was moved to Friday and Saturday, May 17 and 18. So, because of the date move, there is more capacity. Just a few extra spots. Go, go to soulcenteroc.com for more information and to sign up. It's an amazing boat ride to the Channel Islands in Ventura County, walking meditation, and so much more. You won't want to miss it. Um, also, for more information, uh, go to soulcenteroc.com for more information about Reverend Keith's daily affirmative prayer. For Tuesdays, A Course in Miracles. Uh, also, uh, information about our soul circles, the weekly newsletter, and our after-service fellowship lunch gatherings, and last Sunday's Munch and Mingle. All of that is available to uh, see more info at soulcenteroc.com. Uh, about volunteers, if you would like to help us do good for others and our community while getting a healthy boost to your self-confidence and self-esteem, sign up with our volunteer leads, Colleen Lavoie and Kathy, Kathy Loquette as a regular volunteer. If I mispronounce those names, please forgive me. Um, you'll get a sense of accomplishment, life satisfaction, and some very cool social connections. Come be part of our team. And now, let's get up and join our band by singing and feeling our congregational song. Wow. 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, my stars. Um, I just got back from a month-long trip and walked in and saw it Oregon. Leaps and bounds. Congratulations. <laughs> Leaps and bounds. I also understand it's been raining in Southern California. Uh, I got a little bit of it on the 405 on my way in. Uh, but I want us to celebrate the showers. Let's celebrate them, however they come. Mm, let's all take a breath. No. 
Wonderful. Thank you, Ade. So, good morning. My name is Mary Jane Blackwell, and our reading is from The Conscious Parent by Shafali Sabar. The following excerpts are from the chapter A Household Built on Being. <coughs> One of the most common forms of doing that we use to cover up our inability to just be is anxiety. The great ailment of modern society is our grave inability to be with ourselves. 
We are so anxious, perplexed, and lacking peace. Why? Because we are disconnected from our essence. If we were connected with our inner being, we wouldn't destroy each other and now the planet in our manic quest for power. When we are simply being, the need for control is relinquished for a sense of oneness and personal empowerment. By paying attention to our inner being, we automatically develop a reverence for life and compassion for all beings, especially those with less power. To live in a state of being requires you to connect to your inner pulse. When you work from this centered, still place, all activity that arises is simply a manifestation of your deeper purpose. Coming from this place, you no longer engage in one pursuit after another, but instead devote your energy to awareness of your inner stillness. This inner stillness manifests at presence, and presence is the core characteristic of the awakened, receptive, accepting spirit of a conscious parent. Let us turn within and pray. We take a deep breath together. I'm so very grateful. I'm grateful for this reading and grateful to be reminded to turn within to this presence, to the essence. I'm grateful to turn within to that all-knowing one that is love, peace, joy, abundance, prosperity, order, balance, right relationships. Grateful to turn within to this indwelling presence that knows only its own power and nature. And it comes from a field of love, joy, peace, harmony, balance, order, and love again. Love is the basic of God. This presence is called by many names, yet nameless, and I choose to call it God. I am one with it from the farthest reaches of the innermost atom to the innermost atom, God is all there is. And I'm one with it, and I know that each and every person in the sound of my voice is one as well. And I'm blessing the service, blessing the musicians, Brian and Jesse and Arne. I'm blessing the volunteers. I'm blessing each and every person in the sound of my voice for their sacred yes to be here. I'm blessing Scott with the technology to make this all happen online. I'm blessing the love streamers, the volunteers, Jerome and the bookstore and all the people that work in there. I'm blessing it all. I'm blessing Patricia in heaven and I'm blessing Jessica for their sacred yes for this to be here. Oh, and I'm blessing each and every person, knowing the children, all the children. Blessing, blessing Larissa, who is in helping them to have fun and express their essence, knowing that this day is good. And I'm blessing Reverend Key for his message, knowing that we are all changed in this moment because we are expanding and empowering. Checking in with our essence. And I simply say, and so it is. Amen. So now it's time for our. <laughs> Hi, Liz. Liz knows when to stand up. <laughs> now it's time for our agape affirmations. <laughs> Please rise. You will find them in your program and coming up on the screen and live stream. <laughs> I'll speak a line, and then we'll all repeat them aloud together with sincerity and acceptance and enthusiasm. Today I use every opportunity for spiritual excellence. Today I use every opportunity for spiritual excellence. I am always illuminated knowing that love, compassion, and peace shine everywhere. I am always illuminated knowing that love, Passion and peace shine everywhere. I breathe.
breathe life into my spiritual practice remaining open at the top. I breathe life into my spiritual practice remaining open at the top. I invite and allow inspiration to flourish and nourish my body, mind, and affairs. I invite and allow inspiration Consciously reveal the energy of abundance, wholeness, and beauty. I consciously reveal the energy of abundance, wholeness, and beauty. In the spirit of gratitude, I live these words of truth. In the spirit of gratitude, I live these words of truth. And so it is. Amen. You may now be seated. For those of you who would like to experience private individual prayer today, please come up front by the gong and you'll be directed to a practitioner or a prayer chaplain and we have the shawls on. That's how we're recognized. I think I see four or five of us today. So anyway, um, they will pray for you on your behalf in a safe and confidential atmosphere. Okay, thank you very much. That is all right. Thanks, Mary Jane. Oh, it's Greeks. I mean, wow. Yeah. Oh, she's so sensitive. Congratulations. Wow. Just. retreat center and it was so calm so peaceful there were roosters waking us up in the morning and yes there were baboons <laughs> that would come up to your window <laughs> if you weren't careful uh, but it was such a serene environment and I sang this song a lot and so it feels just so appropriate to bring it to you it's an old hymn I used to sing it in my church on Sundays some of you may know it Please feel free to join in.
which is benevolent evolution, it is fun and good. And I'm here to convince you to say yes to a benevolent evolution of your human experience. Your human experience is all about letting go of personality traits and beliefs and ideas of the temporal world that are steeped in lack and limitation and opening to infinite benevolent potentials, possibilities, and your true beingness. That is what it means to be part of the Agape International Spiritual Center as an affiliate here in Irvine. And a personal invitation to all of our love streamers. We have one of our love streamers with us today. And we are so grateful to have Sina here. And if you come, if you're in Southern California and you want to uh, join us in person, you can find us right here. We'll give you a big warm welcome. So we would love to see you love streamers. We've had people come in from Northern California, Georgia, and from around the globe. So we'd love to have you here. We extend that. And is there anybody here for the very first time? Anybody? We're all we're all seasoned. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we've got a real live angel sitting yeah. with us. Well, um, if, when you do come here for your very first time, we'll give you a proper, I just want to give you a proper welcome to our spiritual center and uh, know that we always, part of the tenets of our, of our community is to see and know who you truly are. You were born in the image and likeness of God and we choose to see that. As a matter of fact, we're going to invite it from you. We're going to call it from you. We want to see who you truly are and as we continue in this month of raising and praising raising the bar. That's the entire journey of our human experience. You're going to notice as you move through the human incarnation that you have a certain level of good right now that you will accept in your life. Sometimes you dip below that level of good and oh, it's been an awful day. Then you rise up to your status quo. Then you rise above it and you're like, oh my God, it was such an amazing day. And then you come back to that baseline, the bar. We are here to raise the bar. Raise the house, raise the roof, raise the bar, but not just as a once in a while, not just as that evolutionary tract on the human adventure where we come back to the status quo. Literally, you raise your divine energy quotient and the bar rises and you're good. Now imagine the bar has gone from here up to here and your next amazing day is even more amazing than the, the previous amazing day and then the lesser days are not so lesser. They just get better Better and better. That is the very nature and the very meaning of glory to greater glory. And in our spiritual community, the forefathers and foremothers of our movement, if you've heard me say many times, they were the ones who said, I'm going to explore the truth teachings that are scribed in all of the sacred texts from around the globe. We are an interfaith, transdenominational community, which means we honor the sacred teachings, whether it's Buddhism, shamanism, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, all 
all of the sacred teachings around the world, but we put on our secret decoder glasses and we say, ah, I am going to move through the mire of misinterpretation and misperception. I'm not going to take things literally as it's stated in scripture. I'm going to understand the meaning inside. I'm going to let it speak to me. Ooh, I'm going to let it arise in me. And I'm going to understand with full clarity what it means to be still and know that I am. What it means to be born in the image and likeness of God. That's who you truly are. Now these costumes and these characters that we came to be on planet Earth, whether it's your gender or your nationality or religious affiliations or your race or any of the combination thereof, those are the costume, the character. And we want that to be the best character that you can possibly imagine. You're the star of your life. You're the star of your movie. You're not only the star, but you're the director, you're the producer, and you're the writer. And you want to make sure that you step into those roles so that you can understand the topic of the day, which is from busy bee to busy being. Mm. There's a difference. A busy bee is somebody who occupies themselves with a lot of things to do. I'm going to do this and do that. I've got so many things. I've even learned how to multitask. <laughs> I can multitask. I can talk on the phone. I can even text while I'm driving. Some people, they're like, you know, you've ever met the person? Oh, no, I don't do that. But secretly, they're doing that. <laughs> and it's like, no, we don't want to learn how to multitask. We want to learn how to multibask. We want to bask in the glory of a being. To be a bit, so you want to get busy being means you're going to get to go deeper into who you are, who you really are. Does anybody here not want to know who they truly are? Okay, good. <laughs> you, does everybody here want to know who they truly are? All right, yes. We want to know who we truly are. But being a busy bee is sometimes it's sneaky. It sneaks up on us. And, you know, there's this aspect of life when things get overwhelming, when I feel powerless, when things feel hopeless, oftentimes people will use getting busy as a way to cope. They'll get busy doing things I know in the olden days and still to some degree today. In the olden days, what I used to do when I got overwhelmed or had anxiety and after I had maybe a little bit of a meltdown, I would then need to clean. I would need to organize. I would paint. I would organize drawers. Things that I probably should be doing, I wouldn't do because I had to do the cleaning or the organizing. And that was the way it was like, ah, because the human nature, our human nature is that we want to feel that we have some sort of control over things. And when things are out of control, then one of the things we do is we go to do something that we can control. And as it was saying in the writing, that um, you know, the, today what most people do to avoid being and which creates anxiety, it's the very thing that will perpetuate anxiety, is they will do. And we do so that we can control. What I'm going to ask you to do is let go of needing to control. Now, this is nothing new. This isn't some brand new concept. But one of the things you want to be able to let do is let yourself do or experience is many people don't know what to do with their emotions. Their emotions bubble up. They're the powerlessness, the hopelessness, the anxiety, the fears that are predicated on some sort of victimization that something's going to happen to me, whether that's something going on in my financial affairs whether that's something going on in my physical wellness, whether that's something going on in a relationship with somebody. We want to start to control it. So whether I overindulge in the physical world of doing, you know, sometimes with medical things, people really they dive into everything that I can do with whether it's pharmaceuticals or diet or this or that or whatever, which is, there's fine, there's a place for that. But when you move into beingness, you'll allow your start to self to feel. And when I started to morph and grow through this, I became aware and observed, oh my God, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling powerless right now. And so then I turned those things that I would do into a meditation. I didn't drop them cold turkey. If I was organizing something or painting something, I turned it into a meditation and I allowed myself to feel what was bubbling up within me. Years ago, I was working with a mom 
And uh, she was a single mom. She was raising a daughter. And uh, her daughter was moving into her teenage years and getting a little rebellious and things. And you know, sometimes in the teenage years, you're like, you know, you think you know what's going on. You know how the world works. And you are the ruler of the roost. And sometimes that rebellion can show up as like, ah, yeah. And you kind of maybe don't want to have so much to do with your parents anymore. Well, that kind of snowballed and got away. And uh, the mom in this situation all of a sudden was experiencing a daughter who wanted nothing to do with her. And she even... Uh, when she turned 18, she moved out and she just left and flew the coop and stopped all communications with her mom. For a mom who, you know, in the early years, there was a lot of cohesion, a lot of love, but there was also this thing that people do, speaking of conscious parenting, um, is that a lot of parents, none of those here, none of you streaming in, but a lot of parents will project their own issues onto their children. Whatever they didn't get or didn't experience as a child, they'll project onto their children and they'll try to make them follow what they think is best for them. Now, we all know that no matter what, whether it's your best friend, whether it's your child, whether it's your parent, whether it's your cousin or your colleague, just being there as a nurturing presence to allow people to feel nurtured and supported in being who they are, that's all that's necessary. But when we try to control, and so now I'm going to project onto my child child all of these issues that I never dealt with and so that controlling is what the daughter needed to get away from and so she felt controlled everywhere she was in life you got to take this class you got to do this you got to da da and I, I'm giving really good explanations as to why it is so and um, so she left and the the mother in this particular instance felt so absolutely crushed because her daughter was just the love of her life and so she was so distraught and so she that's when we got introduced to each other and she, what she wanted was her intention was I just want a healthy relationship with my daughter I just want her back I want her to wake up and understand me and I said well you know what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to have you wake up and understand you and then you will be able to bring forward that which you are seeking and all of a sudden lo and behold those control issues started to come up and all all the trauma that they were attached to back to childhood from having lost her father at an early age and having to move into a place where there was hardly any money and hardly any resources and a mom that was hardly there because of working and the mom in that case was working to support her daughter and unbeknownst to the daughter, there was just this feeling of abandonment, a feeling of not having people there to support you, which then leads to needing to control things. We gotta break the cycle of needing to control things, and that means we have to let go of being a busy bee and get busy being. You have to allow yourself to be still and know that I am. You have to allow yourself to be still and go deeper into an experience where you can understand the uh, what Rumi said says when she when Ruby says raise your words not your voice for it is rain that glows grows the flowers not thunder and the thunder was coming as all of these words of having to control stuff and when you hear raise your words not your voice many people might think oh raise it so that you're speaking we want to bring it into the vibration of when you speak your word now you need in order to speak your word about something you need to know what the something is. And that is where you have to allow yourself to be, as you always hear me say, benevolently vulnerable. We live in a world today with social media and with everything that's going on and immediate gratification that caters to busy bees. And we, as we allow ourselves in our community to be busy at being, means you're going to give yourself time to sit. And when something overwhelming comes up, don't try to squash it. Don't try to run from it. Don't try to escape it. We want to go ahead and let yourself feel, but you've heard me say it many times, benevolent vulnerability. Intention always precedes expression. And so we want to make sure that as we open into the intention, I'm going to allow myself to be benevolently vulnerable as I heal through the trauma, whether it's childhood, whether it was a car accident, whether it was some sort of financial experience. Whatever it is, I'm going to open into a place 
place where I'm not going to be afraid to feel it. And when you move into the observer, when you move into the witness, and it's like sometimes, and I can tell you from my own personal experience, sometimes when that stuff comes up, and you've heard me say this before, or you've seen me do this, it feels a little wow. And, um, but you have to let it. So just like this morning when we were doing our meditation, during the meditation service, it's a, it can be as simple as... I am releasing this temporal energy of powerlessness, worries, doubts, and fears. Oh, and I am embracing the divine strength, the power within me to go deeper and higher into a feeling of knowing I am the beloved in whom God is so pleased. We want to go deeper and make sure that we connect with our beingness. Beingness is the entirety of the point of your human experience. It is to go deeper into a feeling of knowing that I am as thou art, thou art as I am. What does it mean to be in this world but not of this world. And that means there's going to be a constant evolutionary impulse that is calling you to address whatever's going on. Everything in your temporal body, everything in your pain body, trauma body, everything in your human energy field that is unlike the eternal frequencies is going to be naturally asked to transmute. And so what we're going to do is, even if you're going through a challenge, which is going to require you to lean in to some medications, even if you're going through a challenge that is going to have you go seek nurturance and support in some way or another. Sometimes people are going through a challenge that's going to have them lean towards some sort of antidepressant or something of that nature. Even as I'm doing that, I'm going to call forward an owingness, an awareness that allows me to transcend and not need these things. We want to know that you are the chief evolutionary officer, the CEO of your life that says, ah, I'm going to observe what is going on in my life. I'm not going to make it heavy. I'm not going to make it bad. I'm not going to make it wrong. But I'm also not going to let it make the decision. When you're a busy bee and your trauma body starts making your decisions, oftentimes all it does is dig a deeper hole. You are to rise up out of that. The beingness comes when I'm still and I say, oh, Okay, here's the erroneous conception, the erroneous idea, the erroneous belief that has led me to want to do these things that are not for my highest good. Oh, I'll just observe that. I will surrender that. I will give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and I will allow myself to go deeper into knowing I am the beloved, and I am empowered. We know in our community, we say all the time, God is omnipresent, omnipotent, omni omniscient, omniamorous, Omnipresent is everywhere. Omniamorous is all loving. Omnipotent is all powerful. If God is everywhere, then God is alive in you. You marry that with being born in the image and likeness of God, that means the omnipotency of the universe indwells within you. You have the power to transcend should you use free will and free choice to choose it so. And it really does come down to that. And being impeccable with observation Impeccable observation means you can see what it is you're doing. Talk about conscious parenting. Anybody who's ever done inner child work, there is oftentimes an inner child is really no different than unresolved issues in your body. We oftentimes refer to those issues as happening during childhood, so we're doing inner child work, but we're also going to do inner early adult work. We're also going to do inner work of our 30-year-old self, whatever it may be that you are going to parent your own beingness with a consciousness that comes from letting go of being a busy bee and running about your day and making sure that you've scheduled at least at least 10% of your day consciously, not including sleep, 10% of your day needs to be set aside for your spiritual magnificence. That means you need to spend some time in meditation in prayer. And then you're going to start to notice things where all of a sudden, in the early days, as I was mentioning 
And when I was suffering from the anxiety and all of those experiences early on, and I started to cope with things, and I did, I did lean towards medications and things of that nature because I didn't know what to do until I found our teachings. And when I found our teachings, I was like, oh, here are the tools of true empowerment. Here are the tools that allow me to access and tap into the divine presence within my own beingness so that I can get busy being me. We want to turn within and allow that. There's nothing that prevents you from setting an intention. Most people, when they do go into medical procedures, one of the things that I've heard, and you, you'll hear from soup to nuts from anybody to talk to, is that sometimes they get a very nurturing group of people that are helping them in the allopathic medicine, and sometimes they get people who don't seem to care. That's going to give you a clue right there as to what's going on in the subconscious where I'm going to start to cultivate I'm choosing to be nurtured and empowered and filled with kindness and compassion and receive my good as people bring forward my good. I'm going to allow myself to set an intention that returns to me fulfilled. Fulfilled kindness, fulfilled goodness, fulfilled prosperity, fulfilled cooperation. You have to allow yourself to acclimate to that. You have to allow yourself to rise into your beingness right now. Your spiritual DNA... And you've heard Reverend Michael say this a million times, the presence that is never an absence when we're referring to the divine. It is present and it is never absence. Your presence is never absence. The presence of your higher self is never absent. You carry with you the kingdom of heaven everywhere you go. It's in your spiritual DNA. When we move about beyond the temporal world and we say, ah, I'm going to center down and allow myself to feel the presence of of me. Feel the presence of you and allow yourself. As a matter of fact, I'm going to encourage you in your meditation. Let See what it looks like if you can imagine yourself sitting there and all of a sudden your name floats and it's just floating up here and you allow yourself to experience an attachment to your name. Then imagine your gender kind of floats up and it's over here and you can experience non-attachment to your gender. Then your race, then maybe your nationality. Allow all these things to live. We're not getting rid of them. We're not making them bad or wrong because they're delicious and good when things are put in the proper order. When your pain or trauma body is clear, then you get to experience charm. You get to experience charisma or riz, as they're saying these days. You get to experience being in the world but not of the world. You get to experience the actuality of your own beingness. So as you allow those things to lift off, then you can start to tap into who you truly are as a divine emanation of the Most High and really understand, like, oh, wait a minute. A lot of people in our spiritual community say, oh, yeah, yeah, I understand that. I believe that. Uh, yeah, that, that sounds true to me. But we aren't here to understand an intellectual awareness of spiritual truth. We're here to embody it. It's very frustrating to understand spiritual principle, to understand what you are supposed to do in order to cultivate that and then actually experience it. That means you're going to start by allowing yourself to say, okay, show me my spiritual practice. Show me who I truly am. Show me the presence of infinite glory in my life. We have to invite, evoke, and allow these things to be. We want to remember that being is doing something. A lot of people don't like to be still because they feel like I'm not doing anything. You're actually doing the most powerful thing you can do by being. There is no separation of doing and being in the divine. The omni-activity of God, which is orbiting the planets right now, which was dropping the rain, which was floating the clouds, it does not effort or judge or try in any way, shape, and form. It just is, and it is glorious. So as we surrender to that aspect of our nature, then the serendipitous energies start to show up. Oh my goodness. You're just consciously participating in your human evolution, doing so joyfully, gracefully, beautifully. And I've shared this before, but in the early days when I was starting to do a lot of this work, there was a lot of arduousness. As a matter of fact, I paid $2,500 back in 2005 to go on a spiritual retreat 
for five days where we stayed in one of these retreat centers. I don't know if any of you have ever stayed in one of these retreat centers where it's kind of like the sheets were more firm than the mattress. Um, the room looked dirty, but it was clean. It was just like one of those, it's like kind of, it's like it's been, you could smell the, the cleaning and all that, and um, it was bare minimum, you know, no radios, just a little light, and it was kind of dim, and uh, during this retreat, we had to be up at, well, we had to get up at five o'clock or thereabouts so that you could get to uh, our mandatory yoga and rising ceremony at six o'clock, and then they would keep you going all day long until midnight, and then you'd go to bed, and by the time you got back at midnight, and then you'd wake up at 5, 5.30 in the morning again, and we did that for five days straight. And every day during that retreat, there was something to bring out something. Now, there is this phenomenon that when you are exhausted, you will break down. You will be too tired to be a busy bee. You will be too tired to do things, and all of a sudden, in your exhaustion, you become vulnerable. And that's the practice that they were using. We're just going to basically keep you so busy that as we bring in these spiritual practices, you won't be able to ward them off because you're just too tired. And it actually, you know, was kind of fun, but I seriously needed a big vacation after that retreat because I was exhausted. Now, it was fun in certain aspects. They had things where we had to climb up and to face our fears of heights. Thankfully, I don't have one. Um, we had to do things where you know you had to be attacked and be choked and blah blah blah. All these different things. It was wonderful, except that that sleep deprivation. Life will give you that workshop for free. It will give you that workshop for free as long as you avoid benevolently evolving. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced, but back in the day when I suffered from panic attacks and anxiety, I would have many a sleep sleepless night. And it was after some of those sleepless nights that I really broke down. I could have saved myself $2,500. Um, but I met some wonderful people. Um, so you can let life do that approach or you can go for a slightly more benevolent approach. You lean into your pra spiritual practitioners. You lean into the chaplains. You lean into your spiritual community. You lean into yourself. You set high resolve intentions. You say yes I will allow myself to know myself, see myself, love myself as a divine emanation of the Most High. I'm going to seek the best. And while I'm doing anything of the temporal world, uh, that is just a crutch. It's just something that I'm going to use to get where I'm going to experience wholeness. I won't make it bad or wrong. And I'm going to consciously call forward and I'm going to allow myself. This is one of the things that ended up happening. Whereas before, I would have done anything to avoid feeling something. I just said, let me feel it. Oh, okay. And all of a sudden, you'd feel some, some emotions. And those emotions are attached to a belief. And the belief is what is bringing about all of the discomfort. So you're going to allow yourself to feel a little uncomfortable. There's a difference between a discomfort and uncomfortable. When you allow, when it's, di un when it's discomfort, oh, and I might go into a fight or flight response and I'm going to crap down and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to find things to do. When it's uncomfortable, sometimes when you're moving into good, it feels a little uncomfortable. But it's a delicious discomfort. Uncomfort, not discomfort. It's a delicious uncomfortable experience. And we're going to say yes to that. It takes use to more good. It takes getting used to being, feeling more good. And I can try, I'm going to, hold on, scan, 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 scan. Okay. All of us have a little room to grow. Um, I was seeing, is there an enlightened master in the room that is living in bliss, in nirvana, that is being of service 24, so, oh, yeah, I'm scanning love streams too. And um, if you are blissed out of your gourd, 
If you have clarity and never confusion, if you have vitality and never sadness, depression, or lethargy, if you are serving others and it never feels like, oh God, like when are they going to stop asking me for help? If you are going to just be, you're going to be busy being in your true nature to be in the world but not of the world, oh, then when you've reached that point of mastery, everywhere you go, you'll feel freedom and spaciousness and timelessness and goodness and the presence, the presence of the divine, not as some external energy outside of you, but as you, as your very being in this. I want you to imagine what that's like. My eternal beingness, as a ray of sunshine is to the sun, you are that to God. Whether we call it Allah or Jehovah or any of the other names, we open to that presence of you. And you allow yourself to identify more with your beingness than your doingness. And we say yes to that. So all of us, it'll behoove us all to say, oh, okay, I am going to set the stage in my own personal at-home workshop where I am, ooh, I'm feeling a little powerless. Hmm, what am I going to do about that? You're going to just let yourself be. You're going to breathe in. What does it mean? Now, oftentimes when we feel powerless, all that means is that I believe I'm, something is against me. And we can feel powerless over what's going on in the Middle East. We can feel powerless about what's going on in, uh, in Asia. We can feel powerless what's going on in Europe. We can feel powerless what's going on in our own backyard with certain events. I can get lost in the doingness of, oh, I gotta, I gotta do something. And the way we do unconscious doing is we have opinions and solutions and judgments about what's going on. That's another form of doing that doesn't really behoove you. If, oh, I know how to resolve the issue over there. I know how to fix that over there. That is a false sense of security and actually doesn't do any good because oftentimes, if you know what the solution is, it usually has a side to it. And if it has a side to it, it's participating in separation, not unity. We are a community of oneness, but oneness with the divine, oneness with good, oneness with peace, oneness with joy. And I will tell you, as they have done numerous times over the last several decades, since the advent of computer computers that you can actually monitor what's going on. The beautiful thing about technology right now is that we can get instant information from around the globe as to what's going on. So when the Transcendental Meditation Organization did a research project, a study, on what is it like when we hold vigil of peace around the globe. And all of a sudden, as they did that over a two-week period, they were able to read the data afterwards and see, oh my God, 20% improvement globally because there were thousands of people, tens of thousands of people that said, I am going to be still, I'm going to let go of powerlessness, and I'm going to step into beingness, which is the true power, and I'm going to hold that. So as soon as this woman whose daughter uh, decided to stop being with her because of feeling so encroached upon and feeling like, oh, she's just trying to control my life, as soon as she said, I'm going to let go of trying to control the situation, and she said, I am going to move into true power, that's when everything, all the stuff that bubbled up from her childhood, all the things that bubbled up, past lives even, um, started to clear and then when that need to control the daughter was gone, that ripples out across the, the divine matrix. And since we're all one, the daughter all of a sudden feels like, oh, it's now safe to not be controlled and makes her way back unsolicited into a relationship with her mom. That's the kind of stuff we do here. We, you know, one of the things that we, it's very tempting, this is a get you behind me moment, it's very tempting, oh, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. It's very tempting. I used to be the biggest DIY person you can imagine. Do it yourself healing left and right by doing all kinds of crazy things. And when you say, ah, I'm gonna be still, 
and hold a space. Oh, and sometimes you'll just get glimmers. It'll be the mustard seed experience where you have a little bit of faith and that mustard seed of faith, maybe two or three mustard seeds of faith, and you can feel like, okay, I know that something wonderful is about to take place even though it looks like Rome is burning and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to allow myself to stay in this and I'm going to allow the mustard seeds to blossom into a burning bush. And the burning bush which is going to bring forward the voice of God. It's not a literal bush that's on fire. It's the light of the presence, and it indwells within us. And when we go, ah, and you fan the flame, fan that flame. That is your job. Your job is to fan the internal flame of your beingness on a regular basis, minimally 10% of your waking hours. So let's see if you're, you know, roughly, what is that, about 16 hours a day? That means about an hour and uh, 60 minutes. I don't know what's that. I'm, my math is a little off. One of you will figure it out. Okay, close to three hours. Now, some people are, oh, so I'm just getting the numbers in here. Close to three hours. And that might seem like, oh my God, oh, that's three hours. I don't have three hours. Um, you do have three hours because you're going into a, some place and being with the smile of light and sharing. That counts. Being still in the morning and doing your affirmations and doing your meditations, that's part of it. It doesn't mean you have to sit still for three hours. It means that you make your life a living prayer, a living meditation. Ceaseless prayer, ceaseless meditation is where we're headed. So three hours, now how I, I know whether it's being of service for an hour or so, whatever it may be, just being kind, that that's part of it. It means you're removing yourself from the temporal vibrations, moving into the eternal vibrations, and then the osmotic ramifications of that will proliferate themselves into every area of your life, and the bar will raise. And take it from me, when the bar raised, I've been through this several times, where it's like, oh my God, here's the bar, oh bad day, the good day, and then all of a sudden I got up here and I was like, the bad days weren't as bad, and the good days were even better, at the baseline was really good and I was like oh my god wow it's like glory to greater glory and then it happened again and it happened for because of persistence we're not a community of status quo we're a community of status glow that says I am going to raise the bar you praise and raise the bar so we're all in agreement we're all going to praise and raise the bar yes, yes. love streamers yes I'm gonna, you guys can say yes yes and, um, and we're also going to say, yes, I'm going to relinquish being a busy bee. I kind of, I thought about it and I was like, oh, I love bees so much. I, they kind of get a bad rap. We love the bees. As a matter of fact, it's ironic because bees aren't busy bees. They're all, if you look at the bee kingdom and queendom really, I guess, um, they're all cooperative. Right. They all cooperate with each other. They cooperate with the flowers. They cooperate with the hive. They, uh, so it is a little bit erroneous. But nonetheless, we're going to go from being a busy bee to too busy being, yes? Yes. All right, we've taken that oath. We are going to bevolve, and we're going to go into the prayer field right now. And anything that distracts you right now, anything that you are allowing yourself to keep you from the evolutionary impulse of your own essence, you're going to let it go. You're going to let it go, and you're going to be nurtured and supported and grow in the most beautiful and benevolently, dynamically profound, delicious ways. And if you need someone to lean into, you're going to lean into them. And your intention is going to be, whoever I lean into, they are loving and nurturing. It's no fun to lean into somebody who's like, oh my God, you just got problems. Uh, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for somebody who is loving and compassionate, and it's got to be an intention as well. Oh, we take a moment as each and every one of us, we open our hearts, we open our minds, we open our bodies, our emotions to the vibration of creation, the vibration of our soul. Oh, we allow ourselves to be benevolently vulnerable and available to the infinite glory, the profound eternal frequencies of peace and love and goodness and harmony and joy and beauty that indwell within us that have never, never been corrupted, have never been diminished or extinguished. They are as alive as the eternal glory of the kingdom of heaven that is God Almighty. 
society. We open to that. We say, yes, I am a dynamic presence, and I allow my personality, my name, my age, my gender, my race, and all of the titles and labels of my humanness to be radiant and resplendent with the power of God, radiant and resplendent with the power of my soul, as I remember the truth of what it means to be born in the image and likeness of God. I am as thou art. I am as God is, not in a boastful way, but in a humble way, as I remember the truth truth of my dynamic, eternal nature. I shall be in the world, but not of the world. And any trauma or drama of the temporal world, I let rise up in elegance, in grace, to be free, that I may be free in this life, free to charm, free to praise, free to raise. Oh, how good it is to know that each and every one of us has spiritual DNA that holds the code of magnificence. And we are allowing that, not only in our physical body as wellness. Right now, I proclaim wellness. Anybody who can hear my voice, right now, all of us are saying, yes, I shall allow rejuvenation. I shall allow regeneration. I shall allow the knowingness of wellness to proliferate itself physically, emotionally, and mentally. I shall allow myself to know that God withholds nothing and that prosperity is mine. Benevolent opportunities that nurture and flourish and nourish my creative expression. I choose to know that we do not earn in God. We allow. We invite, we evoke, we allow, and I allow myself to be paid just for being me. Oh, how good it is to know that sacred holy relationships are ours right now. These relationships that nurture are filled with kindness and love and reverence and respect. Oh, we allow it everywhere. We allow it everywhere. We say, yes, I will be overwhelmed with kindness, overwhelmed with goodness, overwhelmed with joy, overwhelmed with self-love like never before. I am raising and praising the bar, praising and raising, and I am saying yes to my beingness, my isness, my glory. Oh, it is from a place of deep and abiding thanksgiving that we know the purity, the excellence, the brilliance, and the dynamic presence of our beingness that is already done in the mind of God. We allow it to be here, and we allow it to be now, and we allow it to be good, and we allow it to be so, and we do so by saying, and so I let it be. So let it be. Benevolently. Benevolently. Gloriously. Gloriously. Now. So it is. Amen. 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 Ashe. Aho. Mahalo. Shalom. Hotep. Jesse and Brian and everybody and all the love streamers. Um, it's time for our conscious giving, so our ushers are going to come forward wherever our ushering tithing angels are. Uh, these two are our official um, uh, receivers of, of donations and in investments in our community. We are a 501c3 religious nonprofit organization. All of your donations are tax deductible should you keep track of them. And um, so they're going to go forward. There are many ways you can tithe. Ushers, you're welcome to go forward and circulate. And you can participate in circulation, whether it's cash or whether it's checks or those of you who have the blue butterflies, which means you're on our auto tithe program. You're always welcome to supplement if you choose. And then, of course, coming up on the screens are all the different ways that you can contribute. Uh, QR code, address, and everything else. We appreciate you. And Arne is taking it away. Arne!
to our children's community and things that are keep going. We're truly grateful for all of you who are making this possible through circulating and tithes. We are truly grateful. We're going to bless this offering through our hearts and our hands. We take a moment in prayer recognizing there was one power, one presence, and one supply. Make no mistake, the supply of air and oxygen, the supply of finances and freedom, the supply of wellness and goodness all comes from the one power, the one presence, the one source, and that is God. And it indwells within us, and we say yes. I am born from the holy heart, the holy mind of God, and I bless. As God blesses, I bless. We are the conduits, the harbingers, the angels of the earth that bless. We live from a radiance of blessing, and we bless this offering, knowing that it does not leave a finite supply from an individual. It leaves from a place and circulates and expands, returning multiplied. We bless it so, we know it so, and we allow it to grow and glow even more. We see this individually and collectively as soul center thrives, all thrive. As all thrive, we thrive. We say yes to the thriving nature. We allow it to be from our beingness. And we simply agree by saying, and so it is. Amen. 
So just, and our, our number crunchers in our accounting department gave me the, well, for some of you, this is going to be good news. It's not three hours based on the time. It's an hour and a half that you have to, that would be the 10% equivalent, but I think the universe was like, no, it should be three hours. Um, and that's why we had that. So um, that could be good news to some of you, but remember, we're going to go to 24-7 is what we're, half, we're, what we're going towards. Um, the children are coming in in a minute. I just want to have practitioners and chaplains, if you could rise for a moment and just let people know. Um, those who are wearing shawls, whether they are blue or kind of that all of these sateen, um, they're available to be up here if you want to experience personal confidential prayer, even if you just go and say, you know what, just pray for me. And you don't have to give them a prayer request, or you can say, my prayer request is such and such. They'll take you into a private place. We're thankful and grateful for all of you. And now the children are coming in. here with Maddie, Phoebe, and Layla. These girls are awesome. And today in our yes, <laughs> today in our Enlightened Kids Village, we talked about the idea of I am connected and how the nature of God is always present. We learned a big word, omnipresence, to learn that wherever I go, I'm there. And God is too. And we also talked about the children did a connecting the dots activity on the show to show that sometimes you don't know exactly what God's trying to do. Wow. And it might look a little different than you thought. But if you follow your connection to God's guidance, there'll be something maybe even better than you thought. And then Maddie wrote some ideas about connection that she would like to read as well. Thank you. All right, Maddie. Maddie. <laughs> omnipresent, which means that God is everywhere. Therefore, God is always with us no matter what. God is a light, bright, big, and beautiful, always everywhere. God is always connected to us, so you can never run away from God. You can go to the Egyptian pyramids or the Amazon rainforest, but you can never run away from him. That's right. We are trees, connected to the one that holds us up. We never need to write a letter to God, because we can always talk to God. Our ears are naked, so we can't hear God with our ears, but we can hear God with our soul. I feel most connected to God in nature. I feel in awe seeing every bird, branch, and butterfly, knowing that God created it. We are always connected to God. Oh, wow. And so it is. Thank you. All right. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move into our peace song as we just give thanks for our children's community. Larissa, thank you so much. The words are coming up on the screen. They're in your program if you want to sing along. One beingness that indwells within us. I am a radiant angel of the 
most high, and I say yes to my good. Something wonderful has birthed itself, has expanded itself benevolently and gloriously right here. We are raising and raising the bar. We are allowing ourselves to get busy being who we truly are in the world, but not of the world. We allow it all to be good, all to be now, retroactively, proactively, knowing no bounds uh, by space or time. Only the infinite glory of the eternal shall have its way. I rise into more wellness, more goodness, more prosperity, more joy, more sacred, holy relationships, and I allow it to be by saying, and so it is. Facebook page. We'll see you there. Oh, don't forget the bookstore is open.